Hi guys, welcome to another episode of How To Tutorials by Level Nation Studios. This is Super Sam once again, and in this very episode, I'm gonna show you how you can animate a run cycle in Blender. Let's get started. So I have this character in the scene, and uh, by the way, this is a river character, and uh, this character can switch between a male version and a female version of itself. Like you, just as you can see from here by clicking on this button. And this character would also be on our Patreon. And by the way, I want to seize the opportunity to say thank you to all our patrons out there. Yeah, you guys are doing great. Thank you so much. We appreciate you guys. And this character as well would be on our Patreon. And if you want to be a patron and you think you like what we do and you want to support, you can also be a patron. And uh, the link to do so will be in the description below. So, um, now to do a run cycle in Blender, there are a few things I want you to take note of that are very, very important and key to the success of your run cycle. The first one I want to talk about here is the um, center of gravity of the character, that is the torso in this case. Anytime you're doing a walk cycle or a run cycle, make sure the only movement you have for your torso is this up and down movement. Don't move your torso forward or backwards, right? Make sure it's up and down. And if you want to animate a walk cycle, you need to rotate forward this way because i mean the character is supposed to walk forward so you have to make the momentum in place by rotating the hips forward and for for a run cycle you need to add more rotation to it because this time around the character is expected to move faster in the direction of uh, uh, his mission okay so I'm going to go Alt G. I already have my keyframe set because I don't want to waste so much time in this video. And to do so, I'm going to use my post library. And if you take note of this, I'm using uh, Blender 3.5. If you also have Blender 3.5, you'd notice there's a change in the interface. In this version, you no longer have the post library here. Okay. And that's because there's a new way of using the post library. And I think we have a video on that. I mean, check uh, some of our videos and auto tutorials and you'll probably see that. Yeah, so to do this, I'm gonna work with the assets and I need to bring up my assets by increasing this window and then creating a new one here by just dragging that. And I'm gonna change this to the asset browser. So your asset browser comes with uh, uh, the hair stuff, but I'm not interested in generating air for now. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm back on current file, very important. And you just have to click on assets and create post asset. So this is how you create your post asset. But as you can see here, I already have um, different poses created for my run cycle and I'm gonna use that right away. So select the whole controls and on frame one, I'm gonna click on the first post here. Just double click and I get you the post. So the difference between a run cycle and a walk cycle is that uh, for a run cycle, there's a particular frame where you have both characters' feet above the surface or the platform on which the character is uh, running. So it is the key difference between the walk cycle and the run cycle. And another difference is for a walk cycle, a normal walk takes uh, 24 frames for the cycle to be over. But for a run, you want to squish that into um, 12 frames. Okay, so if I'm doing one to 25 for a normal um, walk cycle, for a run cycle, I'm gonna be doing one to 13, if that makes sense to you. So that makes the character um, faster, okay? So now that I have this, I'm just gonna set up my keyframe. And you always want your first frame to be the same thing as your last uh, frame. So the first, the key frame on the first frame should be the same thing as uh, the last frame. So the last frame in this case will be 13. So I'm gonna control V to have that in there. So if I'm breaking this down between one frame one and frame 13, 
my breakdown post would be around uh, frame seven. So, and I want that to be the exact opposite of what I have. So just control C to copy the post and control shift V to paste. That's gonna paste flip, okay? And set your keyframe. So now when I, when I skip or when I jump from uh, one key post to another using my arrow key, the up arrow key, you can see the flip. Okay, I think for now, uh, I need to seize my uh, camera movement so it doesn't distract you guys so much. Um, just uncheck this and now the camera, oh sorry, I added the animation on the circle. So I'm just gonna uncheck, uncheck that and the camera stays still this time around. So back to frame one and I'm gonna select all my controls again. All I did was copy the pose on frame one, paste that on frame 13 and then control shift V to paste the flip version of the pose on frame seven. And that gives us this. Now, at this stage, what you want to do is make sure um, your interpolation is linear. So when it is linear, it gives you a more accurate information from frame to frame. That is, the computer would only give you a straight interpolation between um, uh, each of these uh, keyframes. So between frame one and frame seven, every action happening will be divided evenly, okay? And that is what you want. Everybody has uh, different ways of working. Your workflow might be different from that, but I mean, these are the, uh, presented itself to be very, very effective and useful for me, so. Now, the breakdown for this would come on our frame four. And how did I get this? Just simple arithmetic. You see, one, two, and by the way, you can uh, flip through your frame by using the forward arrow key. So one, two, three, I have that on four. Then one, two, three, I have that on seven. So four is the exact uh, main point. And this is one of the reasons why it's always good for you to keyframe in evens, okay? Don't have uh, an odd um, number the frames in between. Make sure you have even, so it's easier for you to have your breakdown in there. So on frame four, it is expected that uh, my character's uh, extension here would be way much more and the leg would be higher because that's supposed to be the passing pose, you know, in your work cycle, how you have the passing pose. So instead of me wasting my time in uh, doing all this, I already have that here for you. So just select everything and double click on the passing pose. And by the way, all these poses would also be added to our um, patron. So if you're a patron, you would have access to all these uh, poses as well. So quickly, I'm gonna set down the keyframes because there's another important thing I need to discuss and uh, I don't want us to waste so much time on this. So double click and set your keyframe and you have um, the other pose. So this is what this looks like. Okay, so just sliding around, right? And now it's time to do the reverse. So I'm just gonna select all these, Control C again, and you go to the reverse pose, which is uh, pose 10 here. So Control Shift V to flip the opposite uh, or reverse pose. And then you set a keyframe right there. So by flipping through my keys using the up arrow key, I can see what I have. Okay, so I think for now, I'd like to just hide the floor. Okay, so you can see what's going on exactly. Now, another thing you need to take note of is the, the hips here, the way I'm pushing it up and down. It's also very important. And by the way, you can easily tweak that from uh, your curve editor at any point in time. So, the period key to zoom in, and then um, shift H. Okay, so this is um, the curve, you can see. On frame one, I have it on a lower uh, value, and on frame four, I have it on a higher value and back to the lower value. So this up and down movement gives, your, gives the whole essence of your own. And it also gives uh, the idea of 
weight. It shows your character as weight, and you want that present in your animation. So Alt H to unhide everything. Okay, and I'm going back to my dope sheet to continue um, posing my character. So I already have that, and the next one I want to do is I want uh, other breaks down there because you have uh, the contact position, which is on frame one. And then you have um, the down position as well, and that should be on frame two. That is where your character absorbs the weight, right? You have a flat foot, you have a flat foot, and the, the weight of the character is also um, evident on that flat foot. And that means the torso would have to come down as well. So instead of posting that and wasting time, I'm just going to use uh, the one I have here. So you can see, set a keyframe, and the same thing applies. The opposite of that would be eight. So I already have that here as well. So double click for eight and then set the keyframe. So quickly, I'm just going to run through everything now for you. So three, uh, five, um, six, nine, eleven. 12. Yeah, and now we have that. So A, I'm just setting my keys again to be very sure I have um, everything set in. So now when I play this, I'm going to change my range to uh, 12 because uh, frame 13 and frame 1 is the same. So when I play this, I'm gonna hide. So this is what I have. Okay. So at this level, it still feels kind of uh, blocky because I'm having a linear interpolation. So all I want to do here is make sure all my key frames are selected. Right click, and then go to bezier. So this will help me spline everything out, right? And when I play back and forth, I'm gonna have a more um, smoother arc. And something I like to do for my run is I like to treat the torso of the character like another ball bounce. You know, when you have the ball bounce, the point at which the ball drops before impact is always very, very sharp. And that gives you that punch. So you have boom, 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 boom from the torso. And I want to replicate that now. So I would quickly go to my... Um, graph editor and then since I'm talking about the up and down of the character I need my Z location so shift H to hide every other um, attribute and then A to select all the keyframes and the period key on my uh, number pad to um, zoom in or frame selected keyframes now you can see my curve is not really looking pretty so I would like to quickly do some work here by just uh, G, Y to constrain the movement up and down, and just to make it uh, pretty. Uh, I think I need to bring this down a bit, G, Y. Okay, and now these are the keyframes I'm talking about. Uh, frame two and frame eight, those are the down position. So I want them sharp and nice. Okay, so firstly, I'm just gonna convert both of them to um, a vector change the under type to vector, so you have that punch, boom. And uh, I think this wouldn't be too useful for me. You can delete that to have that uh, sharp curve. And also delete this as well to have that sharp curve. Yeah. So I think uh, I'm good to go. So if you look at it closely, you can feel that energy. It's more bumpy. Boom, 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 yeah. And that's what you want to. So you can fine tune your curve anyhow you want to. You can go as uh, detailed as you want to. So the next step here is just to create a, a cycle from this. Because when I increase my range to 100, see what happens. The character suddenly stops. Okay, so this time around, I'm just going to select everything. Make sure your controls are selected. 
then A, to select all the keyframes in the graph um, editor, go to your channel and uh, scroll down to extrapolation mode and all you want to look for here is uh, make cyclic. So just click on that and you can see my curve is extended across uh, the entire frame. So now I can easily play my animation and see it go in a loop endlessly. So one of these days I'm gonna show you how you can convert um, this cycle into an actual keyframe so you can uh, easily make your character move forward. So for now, this is what I'm gonna call it a wrap. I hope you've learned one or two things from this video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel if you've not done so. And until next time, no, before the next time, those of you watching how to tutorials are not subscribing. Don't forget to subscribe.